The next thing we do is we dedicate ourselves to encouraging and strengthening one another. This is also called fellowship, right? Here's some reflective questions. What are you lending to the fellowship? How are you building up the body of believers? And then do you even have one? Are you a part of a crew? Do you have a fellowship? I know that um, we're Lord of the Rings nerds over here and not everybody is yet, and that's okay, we'll get there. But there's the fellowship of the ring. What are you offering? A sword, a bow, my ox, right? Like wisdom, money, like what are you doing? Like what are you lending? Comic relief. Thank you. <laughs> what, are you what are you receiving? Not him. I just meant that's like Mary and Pippin. Yeah, Mary, <laughs> Mary and Pippin. Yeah. yeah. What are you lending? Frustration, because you're Mary and Pippin, right? Like. Um, okay, so. She did. So what are you lending? I love it. Are you a part of a group? What are you receiving? Are you even on a journey? Or are you just sitting there complacent, stagnant? Like Bilbo Baggins would have been. <laughs> I feel like this is directed, right? Because um, that's a huge danger, especially for someone in, like, this is something I have to fight all the time. I can put it on cruise control so easily. Really easily, guys. From the outside, my situation looks so easy, spiritually speaking. It really does. Grew up in the church, had my little existential crisis, walked away, came back, because God's good. Have a wonderful wife that's also a believer. That's great. I work at a Christian school where I get to teach people about Jesus and pray for them all the time. I get to come to church here and hang out with cool believers and receive and help, help lead worship on the team. You know what I mean? Like it all looks like it's great. But how easy is it then? This is the battle I fight is autopilot. Well, it's all kind of happening around me and it's not a conscious decision in me. But I did all those things in your name, Lord. Be far from me. I never knew you. So I know that there's an inside battle that says, well, that might be easy for you, Joshua, because you're surrounded by Christianity all the time. But that's the biggest pitfall in my life is losing, unknowingly losing my faith and my drive and my commitment and my pursuit of the one that I love because I'm surrounded by the words about it all the time. This is why a lot of people who go to Bible college or seminary say the Bible turns into a textbook and they don't feel it anymore. They don't care about it anymore. They don't want to read it anymore. So it's a real thing and everybody has their own battle. So I wanted to be clear that even though it looks like I'm on a journey, I might not be. I might just be sitting on cruise control or letting the journey, like letting the world go by me. Everything looks fine. So this isn't, hey, you're not on a, a hard enough journey or the right journey. That's not what this is about. Check yourself, right? That's why we read 2 Corinthians 13. We check ourselves so we don't wreck ourselves. Make sure you're actually in the faith and not just in a church. Because being in a church doesn't make you any more a Christian than a, you know, being in a garage makes you a car. Right? Or in our case, a bookshelf. Or a storage box. We don't, we don't have any cars in our garage. We just put boxes in there. That's my fault. All right. So we talked about what are you giving to, to the fellowship? In other words, so that concept is kind of, you know, are there people that you're on a journey with on the mission for God? Mm -hmm. And so, but I want to be clear here that unity is different from having a click, hmm. okay? So, and that's what we don't want. We don't want a group of cliques that don't associate with each other. Now, when we say a fellowship, there's there's two different meanings to it. There is a, there, there should probably be like a group of ride or die people around you that are going to be there for you and run with you for the specific mission that you have. But generally, we also should have 
unity and fellowship with the entire body of Christ. And, and here at Seeds, you know, that the entire congregation, that we have that unity with all of them. And so what that looks like sometimes is spending time with people, like I was kind of mentioning earlier, that you maybe have nothing in common with except for we both love Jesus. Mm -hmm. And what's amazing is that if you really love Jesus, then when you see Jesus in someone else, that is actually attractive as a friendship or whatever. And you want to you wanna be with them because you share that with them. And that's the thing about Holy Spirit friendships is that it takes Holy Spirit to bring you together, but it also takes Holy Spirit to maintain it. Because Satan is going to do everything in his power to draw you away from the rest of the body of Christ. And we've talked a lot about what that can look like. But if you both are running after God and holding hands together as a family of Christ, then all of that stuff can fall away. We can work past it. And... So we want to walk with you guys through what that process can look like because it is hard, but it's worth it. The family of God is worth it. You guys are worth it to us. And so, yeah, we want to be, we want to be a family with you. Part of what that can look like as far as daily, day to day, what that looks like is submission hmm. to each other and submission can look different depending on, on your role in the church, but we all are called to submit to each other. This is, this is also in Ephesians, just a chapter later. In Ephesians 5.21, am I stealing your thunder? No. Okay. In Ephesians 5.21, it says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Mm. To one another. <laughs> and <laughs> So that might mean, man, like, I really don't like how... Jennifer goes on and on about this one thing she's so excited about, but I'm going to choose to love her and encourage her in that thing. Yes, it's all about me. No, it's not all about me. I was just being the, I was throwing myself under the bus. So I wasn't using you guys as an example, but submission can look like that. Submission can look like, man, I'm struggling with this, this part about this person and something just grades wrong against me. But because I'm going to choose to be united with that person, I'm going to choose to spend time with that person so that I can let that iron sharpen iron. And we're going to work past it. We're going to get through it. We're going to love each other, whether it's Thanks, easy or babe. not. <laughs> so that's what submission can look like just kind of in general. And there's, we could talk a lot more about that. Did you have any thoughts on that? Okay. That's so good. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> Praise God. Yay. The other, the other part of submission, and, and yeah, that, that could take just a long time to flesh out. But when in the body of Christ, there's a special kind of submission that we have to people that are in places of authority. And so in Hebrews 13, 17, it says, obey your leaders and submit to their authority. So we can talk about what that looks like. Uh, I know that in America, it probably grades on us a lot to, to hear even those words. If we don't try to hear them, temper them with the Holy Spirit and understand what his purpose is in that. But he's put leaders in positions of authority on purpose to protect us. JD gave an amazing series on this a while back. So submitting, even when we disagree and submitting, choosing to honor there's unity and there's blessing in that that God has for us. 